Good day students, welcome to mathgotserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over relations and functions. Don't forget to visit our website at mathgotserve.com for access to a wide variety of math tutorials ranging from algebra all the way to calculus. To get started, let's take a look at what um, the definition of a relation is. So let's go ahead and write that down, relations. So what are relations? In mathematics, relations are basically a set of ordered pairs, okay? So a set of ordered pairs is a relation. Okay, so um, what, let's take a look at an example of what a set of ordered pairs is. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We have one, two, two, three, and one, five. Now this is an example of a relation because we have a set of ordered pairs. Okay? Now let's note one point that we want to note is a special relationship between um, functions and relations. Okay, so before we write down that relationship, let's uh, define what a function is first. Okay? So let's define that functions. What is the definition of a function. A function is a type of ordered pair, okay, a special type of ordered pair. So um, a function is a relation. What are relations? Relations are a set of ordered pairs. So a function is a relation, or you can say a function is a set of ordered pairs that assigns every input. You can um, refer to the input as the x or the uh, domain. Okay, so it assigns every input or x or every element in the domain exactly one outputs. Okay, the outputs can be viewed as the y's or the elements of the uh, range. All right, so you want to ensure that every input is assigned exactly one output. So an output can be assigned multiple inputs, that's fine, but every input must be assigned to exactly one output. So that's what the definition of a function is. Okay, so the points to note, this is just a side note, is that all functions are relations, okay, but not but not all relations are functions, okay? So what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be looking at different representations of relations, and we're going to be formulating a strategy to determine if they are functions or not. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the first type of representation, which is um, a set of ordered pairs. So ordered pairs. So when you have um, a set of ordered pairs, how do you know if they represent a function or not? So let's take a look at two examples. The task is determine 
if the relation determine if the relation is a function or not. The relation is a function or not. Okay. Example number one or problem number one. What if we have the relation one comma two and then two comma three? then four comma three. Okay, and then for number two, what if we have um, two comma five, five comma three, and then two comma seven. So we have two ordered pairs or relations here. The task is to determine which is a relation uh, which of the relation is a function or not. While we're at it, we can also figure out the domain and the range of our relation. So as indicated in our definition, the domain is a set of x's and range is a set of y's. So let's go ahead and write that down. For number one, our domain is going to be the set of x's, okay? So we have x, x, x. So our domain is going to be the set 1, 2, and 4. And then our range is going to be the set of the y's. So it's simply going to be 2, and these two 3's count as 1. All right, now, is this relation a function or not? The strategy for determining if a set of ordered pairs is a relation or not is to look for repetitions on the x's. Okay, so let's note that. Repetitions on the x's. Okay, so if you take a look at number one, do you notice any repetitions on the x's? The answer is no. That means every input is assigned exactly one output. So this relation is a function. All right, let's take a look at question two. Let's indicate the domain and the range. So the domain for number two is the set of the x's, so we have 2 and 5. The range is the set of the y's, so we have 3, 5, 7. The elements have to be ordered in ascending order. Now, is this a function or not? If you notice, there's a repetition on the x's. 2 is repeated twice. So, that means that one unique input, 2, is in assigned two distinct outputs, 5 and 7. So this is not a function. All right, let's take a look at uh, another representation of a relation. The second representation is map. Okay, so making use of maps. So let's write that down. Okay, now let's take a look at problems three and four. We're going to take a look at two sets of mapped uh, relations and determine which is a function and which is not. All right, so the origin um, of the two sets that we are mapping um, represents the input, and then the destination represents the output. So let's say we have two and one in our input set, and then five, one, two. Have the following mapping schematic here. Two goes to five, and then one goes to five. 
That's problem three. For question four, we also have um, a mapped relation. In our inputs, let's say we have one, four, and seven. And then we have in our outputs, three and five. Now, here we have one going to three and then one going to five. Now, there are two ways you can determine if a relation um, represented in the mapping format is a function or not. The first one is visual. The visual strategy is by looking at um, the inputs and determining if any of the inputs are split. Okay, so we'll call that strategy split input. If an input is being split between two outputs, that violates the definition of a function because you're having two outputs being assigned to one unique input. All right, so let's apply that strategy here to three and four, and then I'll show you another method that can be used to determine if a relation is a function. So first we wanna state the domain and range. So domain for number three is the set two, one, two. We have to put it in ascending order, one, two. And then the range is one, two, five. Okay, so is this a function or not? Look at the inputs. Do you see the inputs being split into two distinct outputs? Take a look at two. It has exactly one arrow going out to five, which is good. And then one has exactly one arrow going out of it, which is to five. So these inputs are being paired up with exactly one output, okay? Even though this output has two inputs, that doesn't matter. Your way you concern yourself with is the input, okay? So since these two inputs have exactly one output, this is a function. Now the visual approach doesn't work for you. You can convert this mapping um, diagram into a set of ordered pairs as considered in part one. So how do we do that? Two to five can be represented as the ordered pair of two comma five, and then one to five can be represented as the ordered pair one comma five. Now, if you inspect this new representation we created, you notice that the X's are different. There are no repetitions on the X's, which means that this is, in fact, a function. Okay? Now let's take a look at number four. Let's state the domain and range first and determine if it's a function or not. The domain is one, four, seven, and the range is three comma five. Now, is this a function or not? Using the first method, let's take a look at one. Is one being split um, be between two outputs? The answer is yes. One is being split between three and five. So is this mapping schematic here a function? The answer is no, this is not a function. Why is it not a function? Because we have two outputs being assigned to one input. So this is not a function. If you want to use another representation just to have a clearer understanding, you can write this mapping um, diagram here as one, three for the first map, and then one, five for the second map. That clearly shows a repetition on the axis which indicates that this is not a function. All right, let's take a look at the third representation of a relation. 
In this case, we're going to be taking a look at tables. Okay, this is another way that a relation can be represented. So, representation three, we're going to look at tables. So, for problem five and six, we're going to look at two, two tables that represent um, two relations, and we're going to determine if they are functions or not. Okay, so for number five, <clears throat> we have the table x, y, one, three, two, one, and one, three. Okay, let's write down number six. For number six, we have the table. One five two three and three one. All right, before determining if these relations are functions or not, let's go ahead and write down their domain. Okay, so for number five, the domain is a set of the x's, so we have one, two. Remember, these two ones count as one. And the range is 1, 3. Now, what's the strategy for determining if a relation represented in tabular form is a relation or not? This exact same strategy as number 1. You look for repetitions in the input or the x's. Okay, repetitions in the x's. Now, if we inspect number five are there any repetitions in the x's the answer is yes so that means this relation is not a function okay so this is not a function okay so just update this y output we're going to change this to an eight so your range is one eight so this table tells you that one is being assigned to two distinct outputs, namely three and eight, which disqualifies it from being a function. Now let's take a look at problem number six. The domain is the set of the x's, which is one, two, three. And then the range is the set of the y's, which is one, three, five, now, is this a function or not? Are there any repetitions in the x's? The answer is no. So this is, in fact, a function. All right, let's take a look at our last representation of functions, representation four, which are graphs. Okay, we're going to be taking a look at the graphs of two relations, and we are going to determine if they are functions or not. Okay, so for problem seven, we have a graph of points, okay? And we have a point here, we have a point here, and another point here. So this is one, actually this is two, three, four, five. And of course this is two. So this is the first graph we're going to consider. And then the last graph we're going to look at. On number eight. Draw your coordinate system. And then you have a graph going from this point to that point. Goes like this. And then in that direction. Okay, so this is negative one. Now, before we state the domain and range of these two relations and determine if they are functions or not, let's go ahead and yeah, let's go ahead and state the domain and range first. So, for number seven, the domain is a set of all the x's. So let's look here. 
This point has an x value of 2, this has an x value of 4, and this has an x value of 5. So the domain is 2, 4, and 5. The range are the set of y's. Okay, this, this has a, a y output of 0, this has a y output of 2, so we have 0, 2, and this has a y output of 0 also. Okay? Now, um, is it a function or not? The strategy for determining if a graph is a function or not is known as a vertical line test. Okay, vertical line test. So how do you use the vertical line test? All you do is you simply draw a vertical line or use a ruler and sweep across the domain of your graph. If you have more than one intersection, then that disqualifies your graph from being a function. Okay, so I'm going to use a dotted line. Let's make this broken. <laughs> okay, so we, this is our Imagine that this is your pencil. Now you're going to um, put your vertical line over every point. If it intersects another point, then it's not a function. So at 2, there's only one point that this vertical line intersects, which means 2 has exactly one output associated with it. At 4, you have only one. At 5, you have only one. So this passes the vertical line test. So this relation here is a function. Okay. Alright, so for the last graph, let's go ahead and consider the domain first. So the domain is the horizontal span of the graph. So if we project the graph on the x-axis, what kind of inequality do we get? If we project this graph on the x-axis, we're going to have the inequality x is greater than negative 1. If we write it using set builder notation, we have negative 1 all the way to infinity. Okay, the range is the vertical span of your graph. If we project the graph onto the y-axis, what kind of inequality will we have formulated? So if you look at it, the projection is basically from negative 2 all the way to infinity. So our range is the interval negative 2 to infinity using set builder notation. Now, is this relation a function or not? We're going to employ the same strategy, the vertical line test. We'll sweep a vertical line across the entire domain of this curve and see if it intersects more than once. If it intersects more than once at any point in the domain, then this is not a function. Now, take a look at this right here. What do you notice? You notice that the vertical line intersects this curve at two points. That means that this input of one is being assigned two distinct outputs. So that violates the definition of a function so this graph right here is not a function. So this is not a function. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to our channel um, for updates to other tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on map.serve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.